Hello everyone, welcome to the video series on data science and machine learning with Python programming language and in this particular video we will understand what is NumPy and how we should use it. So if you want to start your journey in machine learning and data science in Python, NumPy is the first stop for you. Because NumPy is a backbone of scientific computing in Python. If you think about many well-known libraries like Pandas or Scikit-Learn, they all use NumPy. Not only that, the neural network libraries like PyTorch or TensorFlow, they support NumPy. Okay, so you can get NumPy from the data that is there in them or vice versa. So it's extremely important to get a better understanding of NumPy. So let's go ahead and start. Okay, so to use the NumPy, we need to import NumPy as NP. I am also importing Sys because I want to show you something, some benefits of NumPy. It's not a prerequisite of using NumPy. Okay, so once we have imported NumPy, the first and foremost thing which we do is to create a NumPy array. And let's see how we can create a NumPy array. One of the most widely used function to create a NumPy array is a NumPy.array function which takes an array as input. So we can provide a Python list over here and what I am providing is extremely similar to a Python list. I am calling the array function and I returning it in a NARR. So this is the way I create my NumPy array. Now let's go ahead and see how it looks like. So if I just display it, I can get a single dimension array with number 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Now once we start using NumPy, the very first question that comes to everyone's mind is that what is the difference between list and NumPy array because it looks pretty much similar and why should one prefer NumPy over Python list. So here is the answer. NumPy n dimension array takes much less memory for storing the same amount of data as compared to Python list. And the second thing is that NumPy makes it easy to perform mathematical operations. Both of these things we will understand in this particular video. So stay tuned. So let's first understand about NumPy, about the size and the item size it takes. So here I am displaying NumPy array size and item size. So NumPy array size gives me the size of NumPy array in terms of number of elements in the array. I have provided 5 elements, it is giving me 5. Now it says item size. What is the size of each individual item in the NumPy array? It says 8. So overall size of this particular NumPy array is 40. Now let's do the similar thing with Python list. Okay, I have created a Python list with same number of elements. And if I say length of the list, it will give me number of elements that is there in that particular list, which is 5. And if I want to know the amount of space occupied by each individual element, I need to use the sys. I call sys.getSizeOf. I am passing 1. 1 is an integer. Since I am using all the integer, it gives me the length of 1 integer. I multiply it with the length of the array and it gives me 140. Now you can see that for storing same amount of data, NumPy array takes 40 bytes and Python list takes 140 bytes. This is a huge difference and when you are trying to store millions of elements in a list or array for calculation purpose, this will make a hell lot of a difference. Now let's understand get size of before moving further. I give the integer 10, still I will get 28. If I give 10,000, still I will get 28. Even 100,000, I'll get 28. So all the integers will be accommodated in this 28 bytes, whether it is 1 or anything else. That's how we calculate the size of a Python list. Now, as of now, you see that NumPy array takes 40 bytes and uh, Python list takes 140 bytes. There are further optimizations which are possible in case of NumPy. Now, I'm storing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. As we know that uh, we can store all these numbers in a single byte because it ranges from minus to plus 127. So till 127 I can safely store this in a single byte. That's why NumPy provides different data types which we can use. So in here I can provide a data type in the NumPy array function by calling d type equal to np.intate. We can use int 16 by default it is int 64 or 32 depending upon where we are using it. And if I do that and I check the size now, you can see that the overall size is 5 bytes, just 5 bytes as compared to 140 in Python list and 40 with default NumPy array. 
So there are further optimizations that can be done in NumPy array and NumPy arrays are clear winner in these kind of circumstances. Now you will ask me about the magic behind reduced size. Well there is no magic, the magic comes from the decision that NumPy arrays are homogeneous in nature. They are not heterogeneous unlike Python list. In Python list we can provide anything like floating point number, tuples, uh, dictionary, anything in a list. But in NumPy array, all the items should be of same type. So let's create a Python list with an integer floating point string and some number. Okay. If I want to see the type of that list, it will be list. And if I want to get to the size of that particular list, I'll again use sys.getSize of ARR. Now I got 104 bytes. Now let me create a similar array with NumPy array with the same elements. Now you will say that, okay, hang on, few moments back I said that NumPy arrays should be of same type. Now how can I do that? Well, it should give me an error. No, it will not give me an error. It will pass successfully, but the data type will be Unicode type. Even if you are actually giving multiple data type, it will use the data type which can hold all the data in it. So here, one is also becoming a Unicode string, 2.0 is also becoming a Unicode string. So does 56,000. That's why it is using a Unicode type to store everything. It says that all the elements in this NumPy array will be stored as Unicode type. That's why data type is seen as Unicode 32 bits. This less than sign means it is little Indian, stored as little Indian. Okay. So if you go ahead and see individual sizes of array length is 5. Item size is 128 bytes for each individual items because it is, it is using it as a Unicode 32 bit strings. Okay, so in here, if I calculate the overall size, it comes as around 640. So, in this particular case, this is taking more memory than uh, the Python list. Okay, but this is the clear cut, not the case where one should use Python NumPy IH. It is for mathematical calculations and any of the data science and machine learning things. You are going to convert all the data, whether it is string or not applicable, not available or different types like manager, employee into some kind of numerical data and then you put it into NumPy array and calculate it. That's where the benefit of NumPy array comes into picture. Okay. Now there are some optimization we can do over here also. I can say define the data type as uh, np.unicode. So let's see what happens when I provide np.unicode and I see the data type. This is different than u32. Now it is u5 little Indian. So if I go ahead and see the size and item size, now item size is 20 and overall size will be 100 bytes. Now the u type is actually depends upon the data. If I just add something else over here like aaa, it will become u8 and now the size will be different. Okay, but if I add something like over here in Python list, nothing will change. Sorry, I did it in NumPy array. Let me do it in Python list. Nothing will change. It will remain be of same size. Okay, and that's where NumPy arrays uh, doesn't scale as much as Python list. But again, this is not the way you do your data science. I have explained it just to let you know that this can also happen and don't use your NumPy arrays for day-to-day -day Python list operations considering that oh it is faster or it takes less amount of memory. Okay, whatever I said about the single dimension NumPy array is true for multi-dimensional NumPy array also. Okay, so you can do same kind of optimization with multi-dimensional array. You can create two, three, four n-dimensional arrays. Now, till now we have created a static arrays, NumPy arrays with predefined set of data. And in real world scenario, this is not that gonna happen. In real world scenario, we might be getting data on runtime or maybe at some later point of time, but we need to keep the array in the beginning because we know the dimension in advance and we cannot create a new NumPy array every time a new data comes because it will be extremely costly for the CPU. So let's see how we can generate predefined data with NumPy array. The first function which we are going to use is numpy.empty. So if I say numpy.empty pass a number, it, it creates a single dimension array with five elements and if I see that, you can see that there are five elements. Of course the contents will be randomized, we don't know what the content will be, but you will get a array, single dimension array. 
Similarly, we can create two dimensional array by calling our tuple which contains two dimension. Here I have given five rows, two column. And if I go ahead and see this particular array, I see two dimension. In here right now, we see zero, zero. Depends upon what comes at different point of time, it gives different output. Zero, zero, zero is not default. It's a randomized output. Okay. We can also check the dimension and shape of a NumPy array by calling ndim and shape. We can see that the dimension is two, the shape is five row, two column. Now there are requirements that we need to change the shape of an array, NumPy array. So what we can do that we can call a reshape function. The only limitation of reshape function is that the multiplication of these two elements in the reshape should be equal to these two. Okay, so 5, 2 is 10, 10, 1 is 10. It will be successful and you can see that 10 rows and 1 column. I can change also 1 row and 10 column. I can see 1 row and 10 column. And there is one more thing you can do with reshape function. You can actually provide one dimension as minus 1, which means that I want to reshape it in a way so that I get one row columns you decide. This will also do the same thing. If you want to do it in a different way, I say, you decide a number of rows, I need only one column, it will automatically give you 10 rows. So minus one can be used if you don't want to specify the second dimension. You cannot use minus one, minus one in both rows and columns. You can use only one minus one. Okay. Now the second function which is widely used is numpy zeros. Similar to numpy dot uh, empty, zeros also provide a numpy array of desired shape, but it pre-fills everything with zero. In here single dimension array 5 element 5 0, in here double dimension array 5 2 all 0, I can reshape it, again the content will be 0. Similar to 0 there is something called ones, as the name suggests it will prefill everything with 1. So single dimension 5 1, 2 dimension 5 2 everything will be 1 and I can reshape it here also and the content will be 1. So unless you have some decent experience with machine learning and data science, you will not appreciate the availability of this function, but think about something like where you want to use a sparse matrix or dense matrix. This is where these ones and zeros are extremely, extremely useful. Okay. As we go through more into this data science, we will see each one of them. Okay. Now there is one more function called arrange. Arrange generates a data similar to the range in Python. So if I say np.arrange 0 to 10, generate a number from 0 to 10, not including 10 in a step of 1. So it will give me 0 to 9. If I say np.arrange 0 to 20 in a step of 2, it will give me in a step of 2, excluding 20, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. And the step need not be a whole number. I can give let's say 0 0.5 over here and I'll get the data as it is. I, if I don't provide any step, by default it is considered as 1 and we can actually reshape it as we have reshaped other array and if you want to assign the reshape we can assign it and we can see the reshaped 5, 4, 20 elements over here. Okay. Now there are chances that when you are using a numpy array you want to reset with a particular value. To do that we use fill function. So if I just say array.fill 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 all the elements of the array will be filled with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or for example, let's say 10, everything will be filled with 10. Now these are the basic uses of NumPy. Now let's see why I said in the beginning that NumPy arrays are made for mathematical operations. Now let's create two arrays. One is by Python list, one is NumPy array. Okay. So you can see that list and NumPy array both are same. 1, 2, 3, 4, 2 dimensional array, 2 by 2 matrix you can say. If I multiply list by 2, you will get a duplication of the elements. So if I have 1, 2, 3, 4, I will repeat 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2 times. But if I multiply numpy array by 2, you can see that each element of the array is multiplied by 2 and this is what this syntax implies. And the list fails miserably over here. For example, if I just sum to list, it will again do the same thing. If I sum to numpy array, again it will do the same thing. Okay, so that's why numpy is meant for mathematical calculation. If you apply some star plus, it understands that it needs to do mathematics, not to replicate the existing contents. 
Now let's talk about an interesting case. I have a list which says hello world and I am creating a numpy array also as hello world. So if I say list into two, you know what will happen. It will say hello world, hello world. What will happen if I say numpy array into two? Any case, just take a guess. Okay, if you think that it will say hello, hello world, world, you are absolutely wrong because if we do that, numpy will give me an error because you cannot multiply hello with two. It's a text, it cannot be multiplied by two. And that's where NumPy is intelligent also while doing all those things. So that's all for this particular video. We will explore more of NumPy in upcoming videos. Thanks a lot guys. Thanks for watching. I hope I was able to explain things in an easiest possible way. See you in my next video. Till then, thanks a lot. Thank you very much.